Welcome back to Movies Delivered. Always fresh, never frozen. Today, I will show you a time paradox that has Hector being chased by a maniac. Let's set the scene first. This is Hector. He's a somewhat normal guy who lives in the countryside with his wife, Clara. They just bought a house and are making improvements while they move in. Sections of the house are covered in plastic and moving boxes are everywhere. Hector's actions are a bit odd as he appears to be the type of person to appreciate style and appearance, but he is also shown to be rather aloof and unconcerned with dropping the contents of his trunk all over the driveway. Here you can see Hector's outfit adequately sums up his personality, he is probably a white-collar worker. He is wearing dress slacks, a jacket, medium brown loafers, and a mismatched dark brown belt. His clothes do not fit correctly and were likely bought off the rack. I have that same jacket in my closet. Hector's wife, Clara, is enjoying her country lifestyle and spends her time gardening or assembling furniture, among other housewife duties. As Hector is inside relaxing, the phone rings. Hector answers and hears someone breathing on the other line just before the call ends. He calls the number back. An answering machine picks up and Hector leaves a message. As he is leaving the message, Clara startles him and Hector drops the phone under the couch, leaving it to record them making out. The two head outside to the backyard. Hector uses his binoculars to survey his new scenery while Clara is arranging furniture. In the tree line on the outskirts of the property, Hector sees something red moving. It looks like a piece of clothing. A moment later, he sees a long-haired woman removing her top in front of the bushes. Her face is covered in shadow, but he's got other things to look at. Clara interrupts to say she is leaving to get dinner. She takes the only car they have and leaves. When Hector looks back into the trees to find the woman, she is gone, but her clothes are still there. He walks out into the street to look for the woman. In the street, he sees a large trash can has been turned over and the trash has been scattered everywhere. A bike is parked among the trash near a dirt path that leads into the forest. As Hector approaches the top of the path, he sees the woman passed out and completely naked. Not one to be too concerned with the details, he throws a couple sticks at the woman then approaches. As he is peeping at her, a man in a black trench coat and a pink head wrap appears behind Hector and stabs him in the arm with a pair of scissors. Hector screams and runs away in pure terror. He sees a barbed wire fence and attempts to jump over it, but brings the fence down as he does, which also slams him to the ground, knocking him out until sundown. As the sun sets, Hector finds a building with a loud radio on inside. He breaks the window and enters the building, finding a strange drawing on the wall. Further inside, he bandages his arm in the medical station and proceeds into what appears to be a nuclear power plant. He finds a walkie-talkie on the desk and talks with the only employee who is still there working late. Hector tells the employee the events that led him into the building and that he needs help. The employee tries to call for help, but says the phone line is dead. The employee tells Hector to leave out the back door and head up the mountain to the laboratory at the top where the employee will be waiting for him. As Hector ascends the footpath, the employee broadcasts the masked man's actions to Hector over the radio, saying, he's coming up. Hector hurries into the laboratory at the top, where he meets the employee. The employee tells Hector that there is no lock on the door and that the safest place for Hector is inside the tank. A car approaches and the masked man appears in the window. Hector jumps into the tank and the employee lowers the lid. At this point, we have several questions that need answering. 1. Who is the masked man with the scissors and why did he stab Hector? 2. Why is the woman in the forest and what was the trench coat man doing to her? 3. Why was the trash can turned over with the trash scattered everywhere? 4. Why did the employee turn the machine on? We'll check back in on these soon. Just then, Hector wakes up and the tank's lid rises. He falls out of the tank, where the threat has seemingly disappeared and it's now sunny outside. In the yard, Hector uses his binoculars to look down the mountain at his home. 
Clara is gardening and there's a man there with her, dressed in the same clothes Hector was wearing when he got home. Right now, Hector is watching a replay of his life from about an hour before. The employee tries to explain to Hector that he has gone back in time about an hour. Everything that is happening now, are the same things that Hector did before. Only now, Hector is not the only Hector, he is Hector number two. In an effort to explain it further, the employee draws a diagram and sticks it to the wall. It is the same diagram Hector first saw when he entered the building. The employee says that as long as nothing changes in the timelines, everything will sort itself out. The employee asks Hector 2 to relax so that he can get the tank ready for Hector number 1. The employee then leaves to fill the tank with more fluid, which I'll call, time milk. Hector 2 calls his house and Hector 1 picks up. Not wanting to change the timeline, Hector 2 hangs up. Hector 1 calls back and leaves a message on the answering machine. It's the same message that Hector 2 left on the answering machine before. Hector 2 hears his wife making out with Hector 1 in the voicemail message and gets angry. He steals the keys to a company car and leaves through the front gate. On his way down the mountain, he sees the woman from the forest riding her bike. Hector 2 stops in the middle of the road and gets hit by a brown van. Hector 2's car crashes into a tree on the side of the road, leaving him bleeding from a gaping wound in his forehead. He removes the white bandage from his arm wound and wraps it all the way around his head. As the white bandage turns pink from all the blood, Hector too realizes that he is the man in the trench coat with the pink head wrap that attacked him earlier. Hearing the commotion, the woman on the bike rushes to the side of the car to check on Hector too. He is awake, a little delirious, and his face is fully wrapped in pink bandages. Hector 2 and the woman head down the street to get help and she offers to cut the excess bandages with her hair-cutting scissors. Seeing the scissors, Hector 2 takes them and tells the woman to follow him up the mountain's dirt path next to the overturned trash can in the street. In the trash, Hector spots an old, black trench coat and puts it on. Concerned for his safety, the woman lays her bike down next to the trash in the street and follows Hector 2 up the path. At the top of the path, Hector 2 uses his binoculars to spy on Hector 1, who is in the backyard looking through his binoculars. Hector 2 instructs the woman to remove her top and cover her face with her hair, while threatening her with the scissors. He then instructs the woman to do everything he remembers her doing the first time. The woman, afraid of being killed or worse, sprints into the forest. Hector 2 tackles her, knocking her out. He then carries her back up to the top of the hill like before, and undresses her, positioning her body against the rock so that Hector 1 will see it when he comes up looking for her. Hector 1 comes up the path and finds the woman naked and unconscious against the rock. He throws two sticks at her before approaching. As he is peeping at her, Hector 2 sneaks up behind him and stabs him in the arm with the scissors. Hector 1 screams and runs away in pure terror. Satisfied with his job, Hector too sits down in the grass. Up the hill, he hears a woman scream and runs to investigate. The nude woman is gone, but has taken shelter inside Hector's house. Hector too enters his house and hears movement inside. As he ascends the stairs, someone throws a table at him, knocking him down. Hector too heads upstairs to search for the woman and finds her in the attic. She runs outside and climbs onto the roof to get away. Hector too grabs her ankles, begging her to wait and listen, but she slips and falls to her death. Racked with grief, Hector too pulls out the walkie-talkie from his pocket to listen to the conversation between the employee and Hector 1. He tells the employee to put Hector 1 in the tank and that he will be there soon. Hector too takes his wife's car and drives to the top of the mountain. He looks into the laboratory window and then waits for the employee to trap Hector 1 in the tank. Hector 2 believes he can fix his mistake of killing the woman and wants to travel back again. The employee is not happy about this, but Hector 2 threatens him until he agrees. During their argument, Hector 2 finds out that he and Hector 1 
are not the only versions of himself running around. Throughout the night, Hector III has also been causing havoc in the area. In the background, police sirens are heard getting closer. Hector II and the employee go inside the building and the employee sends Hector II back in time. At this point, we have several questions that need answering. 1. Why was the trash can turned over with the trash scattered everywhere? 2. Why did the employee turn the machine on? Did the employee have anything to do with Hector getting in the tank the first time? 3. Why did the woman in the forest scream when Hector II was not around? Wouldn't she want to quietly sneak out of the area? 4. Can Hector save the woman from dying? We'll check back in on these soon. Moments later, it's sunny outside again and Hector II, now called Hector III, exits the tank. He approaches the shocked employee and calmly tells him that he is from the future and the machine works. He commands the employee to follow his orders. Just then, Hector I, who is now Hector II, emerges from the tank. In the yard, Hector II uses his binoculars to look down the mountain at his home. Clara is gardening and Hector I is there with her. As he watches, Hector III finds a brown van parked in a garage and takes it. He waits down the road for Hector II to stop in the middle of the street, in the company car, and when he does, Hector III rams him off the road. Hector II's car crashes into a tree on the side of the road, while the brown van hits the trash can and flips upside down, landing in a ditch. Hector III then passes out for some time. Hector III's face is swollen and bloodied. He exits the van and sees the woman running in the forest. She sees him and screams. The woman asks Hector what happened and he says they're both trying to escape from the same masked man. He passes out again under a tree until nightfall. The woman returns to get him and they both enter Hector's house. Inside the house, Hector III sits down and Clara enters the old room. She worries about his injuries and tells him that someone is inside their house. He escorts her to another room and locks her inside. Hector III heads upstairs and waits with the woman from the forest. As Hector II ascends the stairs, Hector III throws a table at him. Hector III advises the woman to run and hide, then cuts her hair with her scissors that he pulls out of his pocket. He tells her to run to the attic to hide, knowing that Hector II will find her. At this point, it seems like Hector III is trying to set up an alibi or even an escape plan. The woman runs upstairs while Hector III gets Clara out of the locked room. Both he and Clara sit in their lawn chairs outside and listen as Hector II kills the woman from the forest. Hector II takes Clara's car and heads toward the top of the mountain. At this point, we have several questions that need answering. One. Who was the first masked man that stabbed the first Hector? If no one had time traveled yet, and we know that Hector II was the crazy guy with the scissors, who stabbed Hector the first time. What really caused the first Hector to run to the mountaintop and get in the tank the very first time? Something had to have caused Hector I to go to the top of the mountain before he time traveled, so what was it? 2. Why did the employee turn the machine on? Did the employee have anything to do with Hector getting in the tank the first time? The answers you need are just inside this tank. Step inside, won't you? Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.